Now, uh, I'm going to talk about these derivatives. First, we have to categorize what assets are the primary assets and what are the derivatives. So the securities which are originally sold by the businesses or the government to raise money, those are categorized as primary assets. For example, the equities and the bonds. So those are primary assets. And usually what are not the primary assets, they are the derivative assets. They are actually deriving their value from some underlying assets uh, based on which they are getting traded. That's why they are called derivatives. They are driving their value, right? So derivative assets. So for example, uh, if you and your friend um, are making an arrangement where you both are deciding to buy 1,000 shares of Twitter stock and you have decided that you both will contribute equally, equally to buy those stocks and you will keep all the dividend and he will keep all the profit from the appreciation of the uh, stock price or also uh, if the prices of the Twitter stock will uh, basically decrease and he will bear all the loss. So you took simply a simple primary asset and this simple arrangement converted into a two derivative assets. One is the dividend only shares which you are holding and the other one is no dividend shares which uh, your friend is holding. There are many variations of this scheme but uh, we need to uh, remember that two derivatives are actually getting traded a lot. One is the future contract and the other one is option contract. I'll talk first about the future contract. Uh, so this is the agreement uh, towards uh, toward buying or selling some underlying asset on a set date and the specific quantity of that underlying asset will be decided under the date. No exchange of cash will be made today and all the transactions uh, uh, like you, you will uh, go into the uh, future trade through the exchange. On the, on the specific date then the underlying asset and cash will exchange hands. Now, for example, after six months, you need uh, to have 100 ounces of gold. Might be uh, that 100 ounces of gold is for some specific reason, or you might be in need of that 100 ounces of gold. There could be any reason, right? If you go into the future market and the future contract is trading and getting traded for hundred and twenty dollars uh, sorry one hundred and two thousand uh, sorry one thousand and two hundred dollars for each ounce and you decided to buy one hundred ounces you wanted to remain certain about the price which you will be paying after six months so how much you will be paying after six months for that you agreed to buy the 100 ounces with the with the seller of the future contract and you will agree to pay him 120 thousand dollars and he agrees to pay you 100 ounces of gold in six months now if on the set day what happened that the the, the price turns out to be 100 350 in the gold market for each ounce, you can clearly basically getting a profit out of this deal and you are saving $150 extra per ounce. So 150 multiplied by 100, you are saving $15,000. 15000 $15, so this is the benefit of entering into the future contract. But at the same time, what if after six months, you'll find out that each ounce is basically priced at 1,100. But you have already agreed to pay to the future contract seller 1,200 for each ounce. Now you cannot go out of the trade. You have to finish this trade. On, this, on, the, on the predetermined date, after six months, by all means, you still have to pay 
than 20,000 to the first future contract seller. Even though you have the opportunity to buy it from the open market at $1,100 $1, per ounce. In other words, you lost $10,000 in this deal. Right? So this you could have given in the open market uh, for each ounce uh, of gold, but still you have to pay this much, $120,000. So difference is $10,000. So this is the loss which uh, uh, happened to you uh, because you cannot get out of the future contract. This is the, there's an obligation both for the future contract seller and the future contract buyer to finish the deal. Mostly if you in between simply want to get out of the deal, you simply take the opposite position and sell the contract to, to someone else. So the potential gain and losses of the future contract is that at maturity you gain if your contracted price is better than the market price. So if you see in the previous case, if the market price is 1350 and your contracted price is better than 1200, so you have to pay less uh, and uh, to buy each ounce of gold, then uh, it means it's in your benefit. So this is your gain. But vice versa. If the, the market is giving you the gold at a lower price, but you already have contracted under the future contract to and agree to pay a higher price, then that is your loss. So if you sell your contract before its maturity, you may gain or lose depending on the market price for that contract. So at that time, you it, it depends that what is the, the market value and uh, you can get a loss or gain uh, if you want to take the opposite position. Now, look over here. This is a, a figure showing you we, uh, that each contract of 10 year note uh, gives you the opportunity to buy $100,000 worth of face value 10 year notes. Say you bought this one over here, this one, the September 2012. By the way, this is we are right now in 2020, but uh, this is from 2012. Say uh, uh, this is uh, the 2020 that is sold. Say, okay, right? So, what is happening that the price of the 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 the, the hundred dollar face value bond is one C zero twenty seven. So, if you want to exactly find the price, you have to add 130 into 27.5 divided by 30. See the fix, right? So, this is the convention if you want to find the price which you need to pay in order to buy $100 face value bond. And remember, each contract is giving you the, 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 uh, giving you the, Opportunity to buy hundred one hundred thousand dollar base value ten year notes. So, but the prices are given in terms of only hundred dollar base value. So, what is this one thousand one thirty plus twenty seven point five divided by thirty two? So, just just do your math. I'm right now doing my calculation. So, this turns out to be 130.8. Okay. So, in order to buy each $100 face value 10 year note, if you will buy this contract, you agree to pay $130.86. And under this contract, you cannot simply buy $100 face value uh, 10 year note, you actually will be buying 100,000 face value. So how many hundred dollar face value bonds are present over there? One thousand. One thousand. Right? So if you buy one contract, you are actually 
agreeing to pay in September 2020. It's written 2012, but we are we just assume that this is 2020. The second column. Then you agree to pay actually one hundred thirty thousand eight hundred fifty nine. And if you will buy fifteen such contracts, then you have to buy the one million five hundred thousand face value uh, ten years. On and you have to pay one million nine hundred sixty-two thousand eight hundred and ninety. Do your math, and you will get this answer. So there are enormous possibility uh, for gain and losses. So suppose that you buy a September contract, which was this one, and on the 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 price of hundred dollar Par value 10 year note was 130.27.56. So 27, as I told you, 27.5 needed to be equal to 32, and then you need to add it to 132. This will give you 130.86. And if you multiply it with 100,000 par value, because the prices are in terms of 100 power value, but each contract will give you 100,000 power value worth of bond uh, notes over here, 10 year note. So the total price which you need to pay is 130,859.38. And suppose you buy 15 contracts, then it means that you need to pay 1,962,890.63 to deliver one. Uh, to, to, to deliver the, uh, you need to uh, deliver this much dollar, and in return you will get one million and five hundred thousand par value notes under those fifteen contracts in September uh, two thousand twenty. Now, if you go in September and you find out that the price of those like uh, Bond turned out to be 135.25. So you can clearly see that there is a $5 profit on each $100 par value T notes. Then under each contract, there are 1000 units of $100 uh, par value note, and under 15 contracts, there are 15,000 units of $100 par value, 10 year notes. So it means that your total gain is 75,000. But in the other way around, what if the price turned out to be 128.27.5? So 128.27.56. What will happen? In that case, you could have uh, purchase the the hundred dollar par value note at a lower price compared to what you actually agreed to pay. What you actually agreed to pay. So in that situation, you lost the money. So there is tremendous opportunity to uh, of gains 